Yeah, so today I'm going to be talking about the Inhumans TV series and IMAX film presentation. Now this isn't a review of it because I haven't seen it, but this is my take on the thing. Now, this was something that was announced originally as a movie, not an IMAX movie version of a TV programme, but an actual movie back in late 2014 when Kevin Feige, as you can see here, had stated it was going to be a movie, the 20th movie released in 2018. Now, shortly after this was announced, um, the TV series Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was in its second season and all of a sudden introduced this concept of Inhumans into the TV series and I remember saying at the time, this is going to get very confusing, you know, and also it'll be quite interesting down the line because to me there had been a question as to how much the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. series was actually canon with the movies. Now if they'd introduced something in the TV series that then later gets impacts in the movie side of things then we will know it's definitely canon. The Inhumans movie could definitely be a way in there. Well apparently not anymore because the entire thing got relegated to television basically. But let's look at how it was originally announced back in late 2014. I spoke about it at the time. In fact, you can see my video at Brand Next Reviews uh, on this. But let's look at it. Just have a one minute clip of Kevin Feige announcing the original concept of the Inhumans movie. So again, for context, this was back in October, I remember, of 2014. Introduces not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but dozens of new heroes into the cinematic universe. It will be our 20th film. It seemed time to open the floodgates a little bit wider. can be a franchise and perhaps series of franchises onto themselves. They are the Inhumans. They have dozens of different power bases. They have an amazing social structure in which you go through these Terrigen Mists and you don't know what you're gonna become on the other side, which gives amazing character drama that we love to play with and tons of spectacular uh, new powers, new effects. With the 20th movie, it felt time to continue to further refine and further expand what the cinematic universe is all about. So yeah, there you go. That was pretty much the god of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Kevin Feige, back in 2014, talking about the plan for Marvel Studios to release The Inhumans as their 20th movie in the series. And it would have been interesting to see. It was kind of looking like it was going to be Marvel Cinematic Universe's equivalent of the X-Men franchise, which they don't have the film rights to. But instead we got this, uh, it's been relegated to the TV screen and from what I understand it's suffered badly. I mean the reviews that have been coming in, I'll show you a, a kind of screenshot of a few of these that I've just kind of collected at ease. I didn't go out looking for negative reviews, um, it was just the majority. I mean don't get me wrong, there have been some fairly average to positive reviews but uh, generally speaking it's either been slightly below average or... Um, extremely below average. I mean, there's a show that I follow on YouTube called Collider Heroes, and there's a guy on there called John Schnepp, very respected by me and others, and his review maybe sounded a little bit entitled, which is understandable because with the MCU, we've got used to a certain level of standard with this thing, and it's one thing to have a TV show that allegedly connects to this great thing we know as the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but when it's been released on an IMAX screen as well, there is a bit of an impression of a high standard that's been set here, and clearly they just have not delivered. I mean, fans of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. are even saying that this series just doesn't even stand up to that. I mean, I've been fairly forgiving with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., to be honest, uh, but I do question how canon it is. Is it an Elseworld? Because obviously, We've got characters from the Marvel movies that have appeared in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. but we don't have characters established in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or any concepts in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. really making their way into the series, into the movie series, sorry. Um, so it begs the question, how canon is the Inhumans? Because Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. introduced the Inhumans and there is some connective tissue there but it's, from what I understand it's played down quite a bit 
I don't know if there's going to be any kind of crossovers within Humans and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or if we even want that, to be honest. So this just makes me think I don't really want to watch this. I'm going to do my best to try, as a completist, I'm going to do my best to try to look at the Inhumans as an Elseworld story that you can choose to ignore. But then again, if you're going to do that, you might as well do that with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as well. Uh, I've been kind of enjoying Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. in more recent times. It did pick, pick up after Series 3 and 4. But uh, we also had Agent Carter as well, which was a really great short-lived two-season run with uh, Agent Carter that was obviously established in um, the Captain America movies. Well, the first one in particular. So the, the TV side of things, I've been very forgiving on, and in a lot of cases, it's actually been quite good as well. I mean, obviously, the Netflix shows have been very good, apart from maybe Iron Fist. But even then, that wasn't terrible. So a bit of a rant here, really, and a bit of a kind of look on my take on this. Having not seen it, my decision here is to not really watch the thing if I can, as a completist, if I can help it. Because it's always going to be there, it's part of the MCU that I haven't explored. Well, how canon is it? What do you guys think? Uh, how do you feel? I mean, I couldn't do a review of the series, obviously, because I haven't watched it. That's not the point of this video. But do you think I'm maybe being a bit too harsh on the thing? Should I not listen to these reviews? Should I make my own mind up? I'm pretty sure from the sounds of it, from what I've seen of it, it's not looking good. But, you know, can we get away with ignoring it? Um, like I say, what do you think? Let's, let's, let's kind of pool opinions here because I'm a bit undecided, to be honest. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Um, I'll see how it goes. If I do decide to watch it, I might do a video down the line. But uh, for now, I'll just leave it there and say um, that's pretty much all I have to say for now. So, uh, Brand Next Reviews, you can follow us on social media. Uh, I'll just leave it there and say thank you very much for watching. note just to let you know how you can follow us because uh, we've kind of gone through different stages we did used to have brandexreviews.com but we got rid of this a few months ago because this has been hosted by a company Infowars that basically uh, we didn't really like what they were doing uh, so we didn't really want to help them with any kind of business uh, co connections so we basically got rid of the website but we do still have the Facebook page the Instagram page and obviously the YouTube channel as well there is a Twitter account, but to be honest, I don't really use it. Again, I've kind of fallen out of favour with Twitter. So for now, that's how you can follow us. So again, I will just leave it there and say if you want to do follow us, uh, check those channels and we will see you next time.